Hello everyone and welcome to round number 3 of the 1970 Palma de Mallorca Interzonal Tournament. Uh, here Bobby Fischer uh, faces William Addison. Uh, Bobby has the white pieces and um, uh, this is already the 6th time Bobby faces William Addison. So far they've, uh, they've played 5 games, uh, Bobby won 3 games, uh, but the last 2 games they played I believe in... Uh, 64 and 65 were drawn or maybe 65 66 it doesn't really matter uh, first time they played was in 1958 in the US Open and ever since they've been meeting up in the uh, United States uh, Championships uh, but as Bobby didn't play in the 1969 uh, US Championship uh, here you remember the final standings uh, of the 1969 US Championship there we have Roshevsky won it with eight points uh, but then you have Addison uh, in second place with seven and a half points so definitely a strong player and it will be very interesting to see what he comes up here uh, with uh, the the black pieces and the two draws he uh, achieved against the Bobby were one with the black pieces and one with the white pieces so uh, it's very interesting because in this game Bobby opened with e4 and his opponent uh, William Addison uh, played d5 the Scandinavian defense and uh, it, it is said that when Bobby saw this d5 move that uh, he, there was a, a a big smile on his face. Uh, it, it is said so in, in Frank Brady's a profile of a prodigy. Uh, of course, uh, Fisher considered uh, Scandinavian to be an inferior defense for black, so naturally he di he didn't mind playing against it. Uh, e captures on d5, which is of course. Uh, Definitely the best move, forcing black to bring his queen into the game early. Queen captures on d5 and knight to c3, now developing a piece and forcing black's queen to, to, to once again move. Uh, so the popular choices are queen to a5, uh, I myself enjoy queen to d6 uh, followed by g6. Uh, but uh, the move that was played in the game is queen to d8. And it's not that this is a mistake or anything, but it's just wasting a lot of moves with the queen. Uh, Bobby played d4. Uh, we have knight to f6 uh, and now bishop to c4. And here Karpov says that, uh, okay, maybe bishop to c4 is a move that uh, nowadays play, uh, players wouldn't play uh, as it allows a bishop to g4. Bishop to g4 would have been a very nice move uh, because it prevents uh, white from achieving rapid development. Here if white plays f3 you can simply go back. Now the f3 pawn is preventing this knight and queen from be being developed on f3. Uh, and uh, if instead after bishop g4 simply knight g2 e2 then black simply continues developing. Uh, in the game after bishop to c4 Edison played bishop to f5 uh, which really allows the bobby to go for some insane development. Here bobby plays uh, queen to f3 uh, attacking the bishop on f5 but also uh, attacking the pawn on b7. So you, you pretty much have two choices here. Uh, you can either bring the bishop back which would be silly as you just placed it on f5 uh, or you can play queen to c8 which defends both threats which was played in the game and here again uh, when bobby played queen to f3 his c2 pawn was under attack but of course black couldn't take advantage of this because black's b7 pawn was under attack uh, here uh, fisher yet again offers the c2 pawn he goes for bishop to g5 uh, and again uh, really shows how uh, like morphy who fisher holds in the highest regard uh, favors activity above all uh, bishop to g5 and now you really have to capture the c2 pawn or white white really has too much uh, too much development uh, so okay bishop captures on c2 rook to c1 forcing the bishop back uh, bishop to g6 and now knight g to e2 so this is only move nine in the game uh, fisher already has all of his pieces developed as you can see here uh, he's ready to castle and uh, if you look at black spawns all of them are still on second uh, uh, on seventh rank okay the knight and bishop are in the game but this is uh, you know black has uh, <laughs> a long way to go uh, from having uh, some safety for his king uh, knight b to d7 uh, fisher castles we have e6 now uh, and here you could uh, try a lot of things, knight to f4 is definitely a nice idea, piling up on this weak e6 pawn, uh, but Fisher goes for a, for a much simpler idea, he goes for a bishop captures on f6. And now the point being, if you play knight captures on f6, then d5 uh, breaks, uh, breaks open the position nicely. Uh, e captures, knight captures, knight captures, bishop captures, you're attacking the b7 pawn twice with the bishop and the queen, uh, after black defends this, uh, you can never capture the bishop as the pawn is pinned from the rook on c1, uh, knight to f4, and it's uh, game over for black, rook to, rook to e1 is coming, there's nothing black can do here. Uh, so after this bishop captures on f6 move, uh, Edison tried g captures on f6. Uh, Fisher nevertheless goes to d5, he wants to break open the center as the black king is still in the center of the board. Uh, Edison of course doesn't want to allow this, he closes the position, he plays e5. 
Uh, we have bishop to b5 now, uh, pinning the knight here on d7. Queen captures on f6 would be a very nice idea now. Uh, bishop to e7 defending, uh, perhaps uh, preparing to castle, but it would be very dangerous to castle here for black. Uh, Fisher goes a knight to g3. <clears throat> the knight from g3 will be very useful in uh, in uh, you know getting getting it back into the game, controlling the e4 square, uh, supporting h4, h5. Uh, here first uh, a6 was played, either trying to get Fisher to capture the knight on d7. Of course, Fisher is not interested in doing anything like this. Uh, bishop back to d3. Uh, and now queen to d8. There really isn't uh, uh, really a good move here. Castling here would be really dangerous. Uh, if black castle, bishop to f5 uh, would be very nice. Now pinning this knight from this side. And uh, black really doesn't have all that much moves. <clears throat> h4, h5 uh, is coming. Uh, if black ever captures here, then the bishop on e7 becomes under attack. Queen g4, queen g7 would be checkmate. Uh, a lot of very dangerous ideas. Uh, so after bishop to d3, queen to d8 was played. Uh, we have h4 now, and now to prevent h5, uh, Addison plays h5 himself. Uh, Fisher plays bishop to f5, and now we have knight to b6. And here, uh, as you can see, there's a double attack uh, against this d5 pawn. Rook f to d1 would be pretty much an automatic by everyone, but uh, Fisher once again favors activity above all. He sees that the d4, d5 pawn is, you know, Free for free for grabs. Uh, he plays a knight to e4. Uh, again, goes for activity, uh, capturing on g6, followed by knight to f6 would be a nice idea. And uh, black again doesn't have all that much to do here. Uh, he grabs the pawn, which is which is a nice idea. He wants to play c6, cemented this pawn on d5. Uh, so uh, now Fisher plays rook f to d1, uh, attacking the d5 knight, c6 defending, and now. Uh, Fisher's all, all of Fisher's pieces are ideally placed. Uh, he plays knight to c3, which is the strongest move. And now there is simply too much pressure against this d5 knight. Uh, Black plays uh, queen to b6, getting the queen out of the d-file, uh, but it uh, doesn't help. Uh, he wanted to give back some material after knight captures, pawn captures, uh, but Fisher doesn't go for this. He plays the absolute best move. So feel free to pause the video here and uh, figure out what move Fisher played, uh, you know. Uh, to put the final nail in the coffin, as, as they say. Uh, so for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. You are an uh, excellent, uh, uh, <laughs> excellent sacrificer of the exchanges, or you have excellently sacrificed the exchange, we could say. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, Fisher played Rook captures on d5. And now you have to capture the Rook, otherwise you're just lost. So after Pawn captures, Knight captures, this comes with an attack on the Queen. Uh, in the game, Queen captures on b2 was played, but it doesn't help you all that much to play something like Queen to d8. Uh, here, Bishop captures on g6 is coming. Now, what do you play? After f captures on g6, simply Knights the c7 check and Black is lost. Uh, if you play King f8, Knight e6 checks the king, wins the queen. Uh, if you try something like king to f7, then you get queen to b3 check. Again, you lose the queen. Uh, only squares available to you as the knight is covering both of these squares are, are the dark squares, f8 and g7. Uh, wherever you play, f8 or g7, knight e6 again checks the king and wins the queen. Uh, and lastly, after bishop captures on g6, after you capture and knight to c7 check, you could try, instead of going to f7, you could try king d7. Uh, but then you're, again, again, you're just getting checked made it queen d5 king moves knight captures on a6 uh, opening up a discovered check from the rook the king is cut off from b8 after the queen blocks rook captures on c7 will be checkmate so after this knight captures on d5 queen captures on b2 was played uh, because as Karpov says what else is there uh, rook to b1 now again you could play knight c7 check pick up the rook but there's no point in doing this Fisher uh, yet again uh, favors uh, activity above all queen captures on a2 and now rook captures on b7 uh, and it was after this rook captures on b7 move that uh, William Addison resigned the game uh, why did he resign there's really nothing to do here uh, there is a double attack against this bishop on e7 so there's really no good way to prevent this uh, the bishop is also guarding the pawn on f6 so after something like bishop to d8 which prevents both threats uh, bishop captures on g6 is coming. If f captures on g6 and now knight captures on f6. Bishop captures and now not recapturing with the queen immediately, although this would win you the game as well. First queen to c6 with check. Uh, king moves and now queen captures on f6 with check, whatever king does, uh, either here or he <laughs> either uh, here or here. 
queen to e7, e7 or g7 would be checkmate. So yeah, uh, after this rook to b7 uh, capturing a pawn, uh, Willie Madison resigned the game and Fisher is now two and a half out of three. Uh, not a bad start uh, in the 1970 Palma de Mallorca interzonal tournament, uh, especially for someone who didn't even qualify to play <laughs> in this tournament. Uh, but yeah, that's game number three. I do hope you're in, you, you've enjoyed it and the, the coverage of the tournament so far. Uh, as usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching uh, and I will see you with game number four uh, soon to come. Thank you all and see you soon.